Hi. Uh, during last week, we kind of departure from economics and we mainly focus on econometrics. However, for now, we're going back to economics and we are going to go through the first application of first order difference equations to economic problems and we're going to explore the market model with lags or uh, as it is uh, very well known the cobweb model why is it called the cobweb model uh, as a cobweb you know spider web uh, you're gonna see in a couple of minutes but this model is a very specific model because it assumes a very unusual structure. What do I mean by that? Look, imagine that we are talking about some agricultural goods. I don't know, potatoes, tomatoes. Sorry, I'm not very good with it. With cooking stuff. However, we're going to be talking about perishable goods. What does it mean? If you produce tomatoes or potatoes or cucumbers or something like that, there is a certain time limit for how long you can store it before it goes bad. Let's just say our model is uh, is actually uh, that our model concerns. Potatoes. I'm going to be discussing potatoes. So, first thing we need to remember is that regardless of what is the price of the market, producers need to sell everything in a given time period. If they want, all of what they have will go bad and they will have losses. So, in order to maximize profits, they need to sell everything. Okay, the second thing that is uh, very specific to a market for agricultural goods is the decision about the supply. What do I mean by that? I mean that in order to produce potatoes, you need to wait. You need to plant the seeds, uh, and aggravate it, and then after a certain amount of time, the potatoes will grow. Let's just say that it takes one full period. Okay, but look what does it mean when company or a farmer or a big, let's just say we talk about big farming companies are deciding where, how much they should produce. Of course, they take into consideration the price of the product. However, when they make a decision about the production, they do not know the price in the future. So, they must take into account the price that is prevailing at a given moment. So look, if you see a given price on the market, you make a decision based on that price at a given time, and you will be producing based on that price for the next year. And look, this is all that we have within these three equations. Equation number one is an equilibrium condition. This equilibrium condition, however, is very specific and it's different than what we are used to look. Here we've got that QDT and Q is equal to QST. What's the difference between this and this? Here we have the equilibrium condition that says that when quantity dependence equals quantity supply, 
This is where we will have a good price and a good quantum. However, look, here we are simply assuming that at each point, each period, we will have equilibrium in market clearing sense. Market clearing meaning that there will be no uh, excess demand nor excess supply. So each period the market is clear. Remember, this is not true for every market, but definitely we can say that this is true in case of markets for perishable goods like food and our potatoes. Okay, again, <coughs> quantity demanded. Look, quantity demanded is pretty standard. It goes like this. You go as a customer on the market, you see the price of potatoes, and based on that price, today, you are deciding how many potatoes you're going to consume. So how many potatoes you're going to purchase any day. Right? And when you have it like this, you clearly see 
for example that this is our yt plus 1, this is our a, this is our yt plus yt, and this is our c. Okay, and we know how to solve it, right? We already know uh, how to deal with a case like that. So, first particular solution. We remember that formula for particular solution is this. Right? So, let's calculate. Okay? Our C is alpha plus delta over beta. And we need to divide this by 1 plus A plus delta over Okay, before we do it, let's put those two into common denominator, right? But this stays the same. And we, we exchange one into beta divided by beta, right? So we get divided by beta plus gamma. I'm sorry, delta divided by beta. And look, dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So we got alpha plus gamma over beta multiplied by beta over beta plus delta. Those two cancel each other out and we get that equilibrium in an intertemporal sense. So, in a sense that when it's reached, we are staying there, is given by expression that we should recognize very well from dynamic economic analysis, alpha plus gamma over beta plus delta. Okay, so we're halfway done. The second thing, is the complementary function. Okay, now, the complementary function uh, is given by B0 minus, uh, let's denote it like this, uh, uh, let, let's denote like this our equilibrium in intertemporal sense times minus a to the power of t, right? So here we will have p0 minus our pp, right? Because this is our... Um, so but I'm going to keep it like this, not to write too much, to remember that this is the value. And this times minus uh, gamma delta over beta, to the power of t. So look, the full time path over here is given by p0 minus p times negative delta over beta to the power of t plus p with the dash. Okay, and look, we need to remember what I already said. This is an equilibrium in an intertemporal sense, which means that once we get to this point, there is no tendency to move outside this point. However, in an equilibrium in a market clearing sense, due to our assumptions, we obtain an experience. We are assuming that this equilibrium is reached at the period, and this is the assumption we take from our first equation. Okay, so look, now that we know the time path of the price, let's start considering what this time path is going to look like. Well, what do we know? Well, we know that the whether this, the shape of this time path depends, may, depends 
on this expression, right? Now, along the lines of the assumptions, delta, beta, and delta are both positive, which means that negative delta over beta must be negative. When our B, right, and when our uh, B, which is negative A, right, is, uh, is negative, what do we know for sure? We know that we're going to have oscillatory time path. So look, if we have oscillatory time path, it means we're going to be moving above, below, above, below, above, below, equilibrium. However, this is not the entire knowledge we need to have in order to assess the convergence in this model. What do I mean by that? Look, let's notice a couple of things. First, the derivative of dq, uh, dq, so dq dt, dpt, is negative beta, right? This is a slope of the minute, right? So beta that we got over here is negative of the slope of the minute. However, if we look at it this way, this is the slope of the minute, right? And d q s t d p t minus one is double. So look, what we have over here is that slope of demand and you see the slope of demand here and over here we have slope of supply and we've got it over here so what do we get from this? Depending on what is the ratio of these two, we will have a different time. Because remember, from a couple of videos ago, when will we have convergence? When absolute value of B, so when an absolute value of negative A, is somewhere between 0 and 1. Now, if it is 1, if, if, uh, if it is higher than 1, we will have divergence. And if it's exactly 1, we will have no convergence. Right? So, based on what we said, what can we uh, point out? First, if delta is bigger than beta, we've got explosive oscillation. Why? Because if delta is bigger than beta, our B, so the expression in parentheses, is going to be higher than 1 in absolute value, it will be lower than negative one. So we will have explosive oscillations. If delta happens to be exactly equal to beta, we will have negative one and we will have uniform oscillation. And finally, so look, this is a specific case when, of course, the uh, slope of demand and slope of and supply is uh, are equal to each other. Actually, I have a request because I'm going to do what you explain.
explosive oscillations and damp oscillations, try to do uniform oscillations at home on your own. Okay, and finally, the last possibility, if delta happens to be bigger, and if beta happens to be bigger than delta, you will have damped oscillation. Produce this much, right? Nothing surprising. However, look at such a high price, customers are not. in 
market clearing sites. What do I mean by that? Look, companies, this, uh, at the beginning, the price was P0, so companies decided to produce this much because they know if they're not going to sell it, they're not going to lose money, they are selling it all. But in order to sell it all, they needed to decrease the price to P1. And look, so basically, if we start at this point, and if we go over here, we got here, and then we got to this place. But look, now companies realize that they produce too much, right? And now, because of that, they needed to lower the price. But this is the price that those companies are going to use in order to make their decision about how much to produce. And look, with this price, companies are willing to produce this much, right? So you see that the lower price in the market makes companies want to produce less potatoes. However, with, the, uh, with this many potatoes in the market, right? Now, we have less potatoes. Uh, okay, just before we move on, remember, this price, the, the, because of this price, companies were willing to produce this much. Because they produced this much, they needed to decrease the price to sell. Now, when the price is lower, they decided to produce less. But when they produce less, they could charge more for it. Right? Right. And let's see what happens now. Look, if the companies are now charging so much, what will be their decision about the future? What well, price is so high, we should produce more. Okay, let's assume that this is a straight line. And look again, now they are making too much. But if they are making too much, of course, this means that they will have to charge very, very little for it in order to sell it. So look, what has happened over here? is that in a scenario in which supply <coughs> happens to be steeper than demand, we will see a cobweb. So basically, we start from a price that is even very close to equilibrium in market in intertemporal sense. However, with each period, let's just say here, we are getting further and further away from it. This is why here we see the divergence and here we see these explosive oscillations. Okay, but, however, the situation changes when the relative slopes of uh, demand are reversed. So, what it happens now if slope of supply is lower than the slope of demand? I hope you can guess, but let me illustrate that anyway. Okay, this is... This. Okay, so here we have P, here we have Q, and... Uh, uh, never remember, it's really, I'm sorry, it's really hard to draw in such a way and not to make it too, uh, too short, but I'm gonna try. Now, 
let's see what is happening. Let's just say that the price at the very beginning is P0. With this price, companies, with the price P0, companies will be willing to produce this much, right? So they will be willing to produce some Q0. However, if they produce this much, they can charge only this much. But if, they will, if, if the market price is going to be set up at this level, it means that the next year, companies will decide to produce this much. Again, let me add the average. So, first, because of that price, companies decided to produce this much. However, with this, in order to sell this many units, they needed to lower the price. But with lower price, next year, they are willing to produce just this many units. However, if they produce this many units, they will be able to sell them at a higher price because there is not many units on the market. However, if this is going to be a prevailing price, this is when, how much, they will be willing to produce in next period. Okay? And look, I hope you know where I'm going with this. So this is going to be a production, a, a price in the next period. So this is going to be a product, level of production. So again, they are only able to sell this much. And I hope you can see that we will be getting closer and closer and closer to equilibrium that at this very point will become equilibrium in market clearing sense and in intertemporal sense. And look, because this path around the equilibriums, this path around the equilibriums produce these webs, this is why we call it the cobweb model. And of course, Please try to do uniform oscillation, although I would assume that this is not going to be very complicated. Okay, this is it. Because we get so much done last week, this is everything for this week. And uh, during next week, we're going to finish uh, first order different equations. Thank you for your uh, th thank you for your attention and see you next week.